Uh, everybody. <laughs> Film not here today. Film, he kind of got sick and took off. I think he took one look at the film we're showing today and uh, shadow kick, kick off. Uh. Well, I like this film. It's right up my alley. Monkey of power enjoys it. And I'm going to do a gold darn job of presenting it to you. What is this film? 1952 film? Bella Lugosi meets the Brooklyn Gorilla. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down there. You're going to be okay. I think about this film quite often when I'm swinging in my cage. Think of Steve Calvert in this film. He plays the gorilla. He was a very famous man who played a lot of gorillas in other films. Does a marvelous job in this. Again, they don't hire the real gorillas to do these things. Uh, I'm going to have to talk to some people. But I kind of like the idea that they, uh, they do get some uh, good actors to uh, play the gorillas in these films. And there's no exception in this case, Steve Calvert. He's right up there with the best of the gorilla portrayers. Well, this film also, uh, this is directed by William Oneshot Bodine. Okay. 1952, he's coming out of his monograms days and so on. Uh, he worked with Bela Lugosi before, of course. If it says Bela Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla, you know it's got Bela Lugosi in it. And Bodine and uh, Lugosi, they must have been like this, you know, they worked a lot together. And uh, Lugosi plays this scientist who's on this island. Huh, kind of a novel idea, right? And uh, he's doing experiments on monkeys. And he's trying to, uh, well, make monkeys get little, make monkeys get big, and he can take a man, give him a shot, and he can devolve backwards. Sounds sort of like the ape man, doesn't it? Yeah. De uh, devolve backwards into being a gorilla. Or he can give a monkey a shot and make it turn into a man. Whoa! Hope nobody comes around with me, with me like that. I'm happy the way I am. This is good here. Okay. Now, the film also, well, uh, it's not just about Bela Lugosi. Got these two guys who kind of uh, find themselves on this island and are taken care of by some native folks and so on, and they get messed up with Bela Lugosi. And uh, one of them actually becomes a Brooklyn gorilla. Now, who are these two guys? Well, uh, Sammy Petrillo and Duke Mitchell. Now, those aren't names that necessarily uh, resonate strongly with you, but I will give you two other names that might resonate with you. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. At this time, we're a big comedy team. Now, old uh, uh, Sammy Petrillo plays one heck of an imper impersonation of Jerry Lewis. Matter of fact, he's a dead ringer for him. And he got the voice down. He's got that laugh down. He's got those weird, uh, uh, what, pre-juvenile, jerky-like movements down really good. Now, the Duke Mitchell guy, uh, just pretend like he's sort of like Dean Martin, okay? Because uh, uh, me watching, me not think he really liked Dean Martin that much. When he sings, eh, at least he's singing, I guess. And I, I guess that's as close as you can get. He's the singing side, right, of the Dean Martin and the Jerry Lewis side. But that Petrillo guy, whoa. Now, one of the problems with this is, though, he's so good as Jerry Lewis, but they don't give him anything to do. He's not very funny. Makes the film very frustrating. Now, of course, that all comes down to one big issue. If you find Jerry Lewis funny in the first place, then you're going to be disappointed. If you find Jerry Lewis to be sort of king of comedy, right? Master of cinema, as Jean-Luc Godard would call him, right? <laughs> we like Godard. Maybe we'd respect him. You know, the French really love Jerry Lewis. I wonder, you know, I haven't read anything about this. Should look it up. I wonder what the French thought of Bela Lugosi meets the Brooklyn Gorilla. You know, Truffaut and Godard and Rivet and Chabral and all those guys, they might be sitting there saying, oh, what a great homage this is to that great team of Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Wait, why don't we take it that way? When you watch this, sure, the homage, the, uh, the parody is never as good as the original, but when you sit back, you think, hmm, okay, at least they, they have found something to worship. They have found something important. And Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin, 
that's their, that's their icon. Now, it's, now the unfortunate you might say, well, why don't they worship Bela Lugosi? Well, they don't. They don't worship gorillas that much either when you think about it. But these guys, Petrillo and Duke Mitchell, great parody. And maybe an homage to that great team of Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Who knows? Well, folks, I think you're going to have fun with this film. You're going to really enjoy it. 1952, William One Shot Bodine. Remember why they call him One Shot? It's one take, that's it. Sort of like what we do around here. We goof up, and we keep going. Well, I've got some important business to do. There's been people hanging around my cage that I just really have a hankering to, uh, well, throw some things at. So I'm going to go back to my cage. Got this little way I can get in there without anybody noticing me. Get up on my tire swing and I'm going to let them have it. There's been talk of taking my cage away from me, shipping me out to another location. <laughs> Makes me mean mad. They're not going to ship me out like they do other primates in other locations here in Cedar Rapids. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm going to be with you. Whenever film needs me, I'm here. I know film relies upon me, like his right, right well, like his arms. He relies on me. Monkey of power, monkey of passion. Roll him, Smokey. <laughs>